Tom O'Dwyer, Head of Dairy Knowledge Transfer with Chagask. Uh, I'm going to talk today about what your dairy farm can do for you. The title uh, of, of the presentation uh, that I've just made at the Dairy Conference was deliberately chosen because I believe dairy farmers have to refocus on uh, the resources that they have available to them uh, and to make the most from those resources. In the quota environment, that uh, era that we're just leaving, uh, the, the, the key was and the emphasis was on making a margin on each litre of milk sold because milk quota was limiting. And to do that then we, we tried to minimise costs of production uh, and we, we took certain steps and adopted certain technologies to do that. But as we move to the future, uh, the, the key will be most certainly to make a margin on each litre of milk or kilo of milk solid sold. That will still be important. But as important will, will be a second variable which, which is volume, which is the amount of milk or milk solids you can sell from your, your given land resource, your, your, your farm, uh, because land is limiting, not quota, land and labour. So what we have to look at as, as we look to the future is uh, something called uh, return on investment, which tries to work out the profit that you make from, from your investment relative to that overall investment. That was the key point I was trying to make for my presentation, that we, we need to look for a, a target of 10% return on investment. The second point that I made for my presentation was that uh, if we look to another country that has uh, had significant expansion in, in milk production, and, and that is New Zealand, and uh, we look to New Zealand uh, uh, from time to time for examples maybe of, of, of how best to do things, but not everything is rosy in the garden in New Zealand in terms of uh, owner-operator milk producers. Um, and the equivalent organisation to Chagas in New Zealand, Dairy NZ, has identified that there's probably 25 to 40% of dairy farmers in New Zealand are at significant cash flow, uh, the risk of significant cash flow difficulties. And why is that, you may ask? It is because the cost of producing milk in New Zealand has increased by about 25%, while at the same time the cost of, of, of renting additional land to produce the milk and the cost of borrowing additional money to put the cows and the buildings and so on in place has gone up by also another 20% approximately uh, from the base between 2002 and 2006 or 7. So you've literally seen um, uh, an almost between 40 and 50% increase in costs on certain farms. Now luckily enough milk price has uh, lifted as well in the same period but the concern would be that um, we're operating in a global environment for milk and if milk price should fall um, the, the cost of production are higher now in New Zealand than they were previously and you know farmers uh, that are in that situation with high operating costs, high land rental and interest costs, they could get cut out in a low milk price here in New Zealand. And my concern would be as Head of Knowledge Transfer in Chagask, what could that situation be replicated in Ireland with the excitement of uh, the removal of quotas that farmers put additional costs onto the existing system, extra feed, extra fertiliser, um, extra costs they're not currently paying in an effort to produce more milk and also take on additional borrowings to, to put the facilities and the stock and so in place so we get a, an extra lift in costs. And then what happens if milk price should fall back uh, towards 28 to 30 cent a litre? So that would be the concern. And I suppose finally in my presentation I, I made the comparison between what I'm talking about and the ap appointment of um, Martin O'Neill and Roy Keane as managers of the uh, Irish soccer team last week. Uh, great excitement around that appointment. Uh, undoubtedly they bring loads of strengths to the job but they're going to have to get more from the current group of players if they're going to win matches. It's unlikely they're going to unearth you know, five or six or seven new players that will be introduced into the team, revolutionise how the team play, uh, resulting in qualification for Euro 2016. It's, it's likely that we're going to have to use the existing pool of players. And similarly with Irish dairy farmers, uh, there's great excitement around the removal of quotas. Um, and undoubtedly there are opportunities ahead for a lot of dairy farmers. However, I believe that Irish dairy farmers have to get more from their current resources, that's the land, the labour, uh, the machinery and, and buildings investment and stock, uh, while also being efficient if they're going to be classed as successful in the future. Yes, for sure uh, expansion is the right option for uh, a certain group of farmers and those farmers are already operating at a high level of efficiency. So they're already 
uh, uh, producing milk at a, a good margin, which would be a margin of maybe uh, 15 to 18 cent per litre on uh, a price maybe of 30 to 32 cent a litre. Uh, they should have a higher margin this year because milk price is higher. Um, they've got uh, the right type of cow. They're using high amounts of grass um, annually on their farm. They're measuring grass. They're using EBI. Effectively, they're using the technologies that were spoken about by a number of other speakers at today's conference. And for, for those farmers that are already operating at a high level of efficiency, for them, the right move, if they want to uh, increase the income earned by the farm, the right move for them is to, is to produce more milk, to put more cows on the, on the farm uh, into the future. However, for another group of farmers, and, and, and th this is probably the bigger group of farmers, um, they're not operating at that same high level of efficiency. They have quite a way to go in terms of the, the technologies that were spoken about at today's conference. The measuring of grass, the use of EBI, the use of genomics, um, the use of cash flow budgeting, the use of business planning and so on, all those technologies. Um, and, and for me, the move for them that must, must come before more cows is they must up the performance of their current business. And I think that in doing that, they will produce more milk. So in effect, they're producing more milk, but not necessarily with more cows or putting up a new shed or putting up a new parlour. They're just getting, as I said, they're getting more from the existing investment or the existing resources that are on their farm without having to, to put more money into it. So there, there's definitely two categories of farmers. Those that are already highly efficient, expansion is the right move. Those that are uh, let's call them average or low efficiency, uh, the move for them over the next number of years has to be trying up their game and then they can think about more cows.